to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Welcome, everyone, to Oroho, the way. We have an exciting month with a series of lectures on the Syriac manuscripts. And today we have the first an introduction to the patriarchal library. This will be an overview uh, of the patriarchal archives and what we are, what, what is being preserved in the library. Uh, we have an exciting speaker with us today and we are so blessed to introduce to you um, more Dr. Severios Roger Akras. Um, many of you know that um, Archbishop is the head of the Syriac um, department, the Syriac Studies Department, as appointed by the Blessed Patriarch Ephraim II. <clears throat> well, many of the uh, academic uh, world introduce uh, Archbishop um, uh, Roger Akrash. And, you know, I'm just quoting uh, from one of the professors, and this will be an introduction. And what he says, this is an understatement to say that uh, Archbishop is one of the brightest light in the Syriac Orthodox uh, Church. So we are so blessed to have um, His Eminence uh, for this talk, giving an introduction to the Patriarchal Archive and overview. And he has an excellent educational background. He was born and raised in Lebanon. And uh, then he completed his uh, bachelor's degree in theology and philosophy in Paris, uh, and then uh, he returned uh, to Lebanon, and then he continued his studies, and then again went back to Paris uh, for his doctoral studies in patristics uh, from the Institute of Catholic. And he is serving as a professor, um, part-time and full-time in on patristics, Syriac studies, New Testament uh, in various institutes, and giving a lot of uh, guest lectures, and he has a uh, a series of uh, publications, many books, and many products that we he envision. And one of the things that he is uh, mostly into is the digitalization, the, hum the digital humanities. And that's one thing that we can look at uh, this department, uh, the library itself, as part of uh, the comprehensive plan to create an organized structure for the Syriac Orthodox Patriarch of Antioch, His Holiness More, Ignatius of Frame II officially established the Department of Syriac Studies uh, by patriarchal decree issued on January 6, 2015. And since then, um, uh, His Eminence is serving as the director of the department. Uh, he is um, charged with organizing its divisions and following up with the scientific and cultural issues overseen by the Patriarch. And there are a lot of projects uh, you can see as part of the Patriarchal Library. With that brief introduction, let me welcome uh, His Eminence, Severius, uh, more Severius Roger Akras, Roger Akras to um, this uh, talk on the introduction and overview of the Patriarchal Library. Um, uh, stay tuned because we have a few announcements towards the end. And if you have any questions, you can just um, add in the comment section and we'll be uh, able to address those questions towards the end as well. As I said, like, you know, this month we have two more um, lectures coming up. Uh, uh, stay tuned for... Thank you, thank you, Father uh, Rajan, Matthew, uh, for this introduction. I am uh, delighted uh, to be with you on this wonderful platform, uh, Urho the Way. I was invited uh, several times to be part uh, of the speakers on this platform, and finally here I am. Uh, I. I am amazed at the work that you have done on this platform, the many uh, very valuable uh, lectures and uh, presentations given by scholars all around the world. So I congratulate you for your work and uh, 
I am very thankful as well as many of uh, my brothers uh, who are following uh, the Orho the way. Thank you. Today, I, Taudi, so today I am invited to speak about, uh, I, I, I don't know if you are seeing, yes, here is my presentation. Uh, so uh, today I'm invited to speak about the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchal uh, Library. And uh, in the library, I will be speaking about uh, the manuscripts only, not about the printed uh, books, because we have the library which contains printed books. And this library contains about uh, 20,000 of uh, printed uh, books. And it is uh, based in Ma'ara Saidnaya in St. Ephraim Theological Seminary. So it is the library of the seminary. But I will be speaking uh, rather about the manuscripts of uh, the Syriac Orthodox uh, Patriarchate. So the difference between manuscripts and printed books is very simple, that manuscripts are the books, the old books written by hand. And the printed books are all the books that are uh, uh, printed since uh, the 15th or 16th century. So uh, because I'm mentioning that because many times we have people who come and bring us, and this we are seeing often the last years, bringing us some books that seem old and uh, actually there are uh, false uh, books or uh, forged uh, books that are made by uh, cheaters in uh, some countries in the Middle East and they want to sell them as manuscripts or old manuscripts and when we look into them we find most of the time that these books have printed text in them and the printed text on some kind of papers or leather and uh, they try to give them an old uh, appearance but actually there are printed texts on uh, old uh, papers or old uh, leather so we should make very well the distinction between uh, manuscripts and uh, printed books now the first point that I want to mention is about the place and the number of the manuscripts that the Patriarchate hold. We can say that the collection of the historical manuscripts of the Syriac Patriarchate of Antioch can be found today in different places. So it is scattered or spread in different places. First in Mardin, Turkey, and uh, very specifically in the Church of the Forty Martyrs in Mardin and in Deir Zafaran also. But the main collection is the collection of the Church of the Forty Martyrs because you know the Patriarchate was located in Mardin for 740 years between 1293 until 1933. And a number of manuscripts also moved to Lebanon when the Syriac Catholic uh, Patriarch, the newly elected uh, Patriarch Jarwe, moved to Lebanon and he brought with him many manuscripts of the Patriarchate, of the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate, and brought them with him to Lebanon and they are today in Sharfe in Lebanon. And the third location is the manuscripts that were gathered at Damascus at the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate. So after the Patriarchate moved from Mardin, it arrived to Homs, so in 1933, with Patriarch Ephraim I, and then it was again moved to Damascus, transferred to Damascus in 1957 with Patriarch uh, Jacob III, and the manuscripts were moving with uh, these patriarchs. So we will speak about the collection of Damascus more in details after a little. So the manuscripts of Mardin, if we count them, there are around uh, 1,400 manuscripts, and these are digitized now by Hill Museum and Manuscript Library 
in Minnesota, the United States. And uh, most of them can be accessed online on the website, the virtual Himmel, what we call the virtual Himmel. So the virtual room of the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library. And the responsible of this project is Father uh, Colomba. The manuscripts of Sharfe, so of the Syria Catholic Patriarchate, are around 2,200 manuscripts. And these are in the process of being digitized by the Syria Catholic Patriarchate. And these manuscripts are now under the responsibility of uh, Father uh, Yusuf Dargham in the Syria Catholic Patriarchate and a group of uh, Syria uh, or French scholars are working on a catalog of the Syriac Orthodox, uh, Syria Catholic manuscripts at Sharfi. The collection of the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate in Damascus includes now about 725 manuscripts. The half of them was partially digitized in the year 2000 by Father Hazael Saume. So it was the first digitization by Father Hazael, who is later, who became later a more serious Hazael of uh, Belgium and France. Speaking about digitization, since December 2014, we began a new project of digitizing the patriarchal collection in Damascus and Atshani. So we gathered both collections of Damascus and Atshani according to high digital imaging standards. And this project was carried out by the Department of Syriac Studies at the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate. Some manuscripts were digitized by single page recto and verso, so we take for every page, every recto or every verso, one image, and some were too small, and some couldn't be completely opened, so we digitized them two pages together. So to give you uh, some idea about uh, digitizing the manuscripts, here we, we see the nuns, who worked on uh, the manuscripts and the camera and how they would uh, work on digitizing manuscripts at the Patriarchate. Another uh, image of uh, their work on digitization. Here you can see an image that was digitized by uh, the new project of uh, the Department of Syriac Studies. And this colophon uh, can be now read due to the high standards that we used in uh, digitizing these images. So we can uh, really maximize a lot the details. And the details that here are a little bit erased when we maximize the image, we can read them. Before that uh, technology arrived, it was very difficult to read uh, this kind of texts. So you can see how technology helps us uh, as scholars in dec deciphering these uh, texts, old texts that are erased sometimes uh, with time. Here you can see, for example, an image that was digitized in the year 2000 with the technology of that time. So the, we started, I said, the digitization in the year 2000 with Father Hazar Salmi. This was the quality at that time. And this same image, we digitized it again in 2014 with new, let's say, technologies, and it gives this result. So you can see the difference between the two, uh, let's say, uh, stages of digitizing these manuscripts, the old one on the right side of the image and the new one. We have the same image and how the quality 
is uh, uh, really better in the new uh, digitization. Let's say now uh, something about the history of the collection. The collection that we have in the Patriarchate is both old and recent. In its current state, it was collected by the Patriarch Ephraim Barsom. At the end of his Patriarchate, it contained 314 manuscripts, according to the catalog, to the Syria catalog prepared by Bishop Morphilosinos Yohannon Dolabani of Mardin. So Bishop Dolabani, after the death of uh, Patriarch uh, Ephraim Barsum, or at the end of his Patriarchate, before his death, maybe uh, little before his death, or uh, at the end of this Patriarchate, he prepared a list of the manuscripts before moving them again uh, to Damascus with Patriarch Jacob III. So he mentioned 314 manuscripts. And uh, this same catalog was translated into Arabic by Bishop Gregorius Poulos Behnam, who was the Bishop uh, of Baghdad. And he uh, mentioned 313 manuscripts because he merged two uh, manuscripts that were separated in the catalog of uh, Dolabani. And he published this Arabic catalog in uh, the book about the life of Patriarch Ephraim uh, Barson in the year 1959. And this same catalog was later translated into uh, French or uh, into, uh, yes, into French by. Uh, uh, René Lavenant, who is a French scholar, was based in Lyon, working uh, in Lyon. And uh, René Lavenant uh, worked with uh, Samir Khalil, a uh, well-renowned scholar in Christian Arabic studies, and with uh, Professor Sebastian Brock to prepare uh, this kind of checklist, not a very detailed catalog uh, indeed, it is a checklist that was prepared in French and published in Parole de Lorient, uh, a magazine or a journal published by the Holy Spirit uh, University of Kaslik. The books that we have uh, in this collection at the Patriarchate derive from various centers of the Orbis Syriacus. So I mean, Patriarch Afrem Barson collected books from different places and he brought them with him at the Patriarchate. He couldn't bring everything from Mardin, but he brought some valuable manuscripts from Mardin, from Jerusalem, and from some churches in Homs, and from Damascus, from Tur Abdin, etc. Some of these books were evacuated during the 20th century or collected earlier in the days of a wandering Patriarchate. So what uh, Patriarch Ephraim the first did is actually uh, sometimes he bought himself with his own money some old books, manuscripts from priests, from laymen who brought these books to him at different times during his Patriarchate. So he was buying sometimes manuscripts because the historical uh, collection, as I mentioned earlier, of the Patriarchate is in uh, Mardin and uh, in Jerusalem, but mostly in uh, Mardin and still there. So uh, some of some of the books of this collection were brought by the Patriarch from Barsom with him to Syria, but the most majority is still in uh, Turkey in Mardin. So the present collection now that arrives to 725 manuscripts includes the manuscript first, the manuscript collected by Patriarch Afrem Barsom, and these are 314 manuscripts. And manuscripts added until the year 2000, so until the year where Father Hazael Salme worked on this collection, 
and we reach the number of 372 manuscripts. And here we should mention that uh, 38 manuscripts mentioned in the catalog of Dolabani and Behnam about the manuscript collected by Patriarch Ephraim Barsoom are now considered as missing. But others were added instead of them. So in the year 2000, we had like 372 manuscripts. And we added to this the manuscripts of the seminary at Atshani, 113 manuscripts. So we give them uh, numbers, Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate, 373 until 485. Uh, some of these manuscripts are from the personal library of Archdeacon Naamtallah Dinnu. And then we have the manuscripts of the Patriarchal Diocese of Damascus. So these were in the Damascus uh, Diocese, uh, 67 manuscripts. They were given numbers from SOP 486 to 552. And then uh, Father Gabriel Dahu, who is now uh, the Archbishop of Jerusalem, he brought some manuscripts with him from Brazil. And these were 15 manuscripts. Uh, other manuscripts, 40 manuscripts, were brought and added to the collection from the attic of St. George Shrine in Damascus. And Later, His Holiness uh, brought many uh, manuscripts. He brought uh, first from the Patriarchal Office. The, there were some manuscripts in the Patriarchal Office, 26 manuscripts, and they were added. Uh, the former Bishop of Atshani, uh, Bishop Philoxenos Matashamun, also had some 14 manuscripts. Some of them, for example, he ordered them in Turkey or in Iraq. He asked some uh, scribes to copy manuscripts from for him. So he had 14 manuscripts and these were added to the collection. And again, as I said, uh, Patrick Afrem uh, II, uh, our current patriarch, brought the final 81 manuscripts that were added to this collection from uh, different places. These The sources are not yet very clear where these manuscripts uh, came from, but we reach this number of SOP 730. Now, about 38 manuscripts, as I said, from the historical library of Patriarch Ephraim Barsoom are now considered as missing. Where are these? Were they sold uh, formally or informally or stolen? Uh, we know about manuscripts sold officially by Patrick Ephraim Barson to some uh, libraries in the U.S., in Chicago, for example, or uh, Boston. We, we have uh, some uh, documents showing that Patrick Ephraim Barson indeed uh, is uh, selling some uh, or sold some manuscripts to international uh, libraries. Some manuscripts were taken out and used by the patriarchs, by Patriarch uh, Jacob III or Patriarch uh, Ephraim uh, or uh, Patriarch Zakka, and then left among the manuscripts in Damascus, and we found them again. And here I give the numbers that we didn't find them in the beginning, and then we found them in the Patriarch uh, office or in the collection of Damascus. Alongside the Syrian manuscripts, the collection contains numerous Garshuni manuscripts. So Garshuni is the Arabic language written in Syrian characters. We have some uh, Ottoman manuscripts, uh, I think one Armenian manuscripts, but the majority, the vast majority are in uh, Syriac. And the vast majority of the works are on biblical, liturgical, or dogmatic topic. But some very valuable manuscripts in other subjects are extant as well, like history and medicine and philosophy. The objects of this library are, by and large, well preserved. How old the manuscripts are? 
There is a big variety of the manuscripts, some of them of impressive age, especially those brought from Mardin and Jerusalem by Patriarch uh, Ephraim I. And these manuscripts are put in section, in a special section, the manuscripts that are in leather, written on leather. Uh, so uh, these are parchment, what we call in uh, the language of, uh, uh, of codicology, these are parchments. And the oldest manuscripts is a copy of the New Testament from the 6th century, which is Damascus 12 over 1, followed by the book on epidemics, so a book of medicine, uh, the last one of uh, this section, 1225, and dated before the year 705, uh, Christian era. And the book of Saint Athanasius against the Arians, so translated from Greek into Syriac, and this book is dated to the 8th century. But several manuscripts also are copied in the 19th and uh, 20th century, and uh, are sometimes copies of very uh, older uh, manuscripts. Now speaking about the catalog, so far the sole catalog existing was the inventory by Patrick Afrem Barsom prepared in Syriac by Morphiloxinus Yohannon Daulabani in 1957 and in Arabic by Morgrigorus Bus Dehnam, I have mentioned that, in 1959 and translated into French and published in Parole de Lorient in 1994. This uh, catalog is available in all these language languages uh, online. You can visit, for example, our page of Department of Syriac Studies on uh, online, and you will find a section about the library and about the manuscripts, and there you will find all the informations of this catalog, which is actually a checklist, as I mentioned earlier. This catalog uh, covers 314 manuscripts only. It is divided into 12 sections, so about the Holy Bible, Biblical exegesis, third section, Mimre and Sermons, fourth, Theology and Controverses, fifth, about the music and liturgy, the sixth, about sciences, medicine, philosophy, uh, the seventh section is for uh, lexicography, linguistics. The eighth section is about canons and synods. The ninth is about history and history of saints and the uh, history of the church. The tenth section is about moral theology and uh, asceticism. The eleventh section is about Islamic books, and many of them are in Arabic, and the 12th section, as I said, are the parchments written on leather, the old Syriac books. Now, the publication of a new catalog for this collection is in progress. The first step of this project entitled Syriac is entitled Syriac Manuscript Treasures. It is carried out by the Department of Syriac Studies in collaboration with the Vestigia Center, the University of Graz in Vienna, Austria, and funded by the Austrian Science Fund, FWF. The team of uh, this project, so the project of a catalog of uh, the manuscript of the Patriarchate, uh, is composed of Professor Eric Renhardt, who is the project leader. He's uh, working in Graz, and he's responsible for the codicological description. So describing uh, the material of the manuscripts, uh, the handwriting, and all the details about uh, the shape of the manuscript. And uh, myself, I am working from the Patriarchate at Atshane, and I am responsible for the description of the contents. And we have Dr. Ephraim Ishaq, 
or also working uh, from Graz in Austria, and he is responsible for transferring the contents into the database. And Sean Winslow from Graz as well, who is the IT from the Austrian Center for Digital Humanities. The new cataloging project is focused on uh, 60 pre-selected manuscripts only from the 725. We selected only 60 manuscripts to give them a detailed uh, description. The project's output will be an online abbreviated manuscript catalog and an extended printed catalog. Hopefully, this will be uh, achieved and uh, published in the uh, current year. Now, for ordering images from uh, the collection, uh, the Patriarchal Library is, generally speaking, openly accessible. So, sc scholars like uh, Sojé or Vobus or Sebastian Brock have visited uh, the library uh, in the 70s uh, of last century uh, or the 80s, and they did their studies on location. Uh, nowadays, there is no need to come really often to the library. Researchers may order digital copies and uh, expect to receive them in due time. We are offering this service uh, and uh, we are collaborating with many uh, scholars around the world in providing the digital image that we are uh, preparing uh, for them. So this was uh, my presentation, uh, dear brothers, uh, about the Patriarchal Library. I'm ready to answer your uh, uh, questions if you have any, and uh, I thank you again for your attention. Cannot hear you, Father Rajon. You are muted, I think. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Saidna, for this wonderful presentation and giving an introduction to what the patriarchal library looks like and what works are being done, and uh, um, you know how the digitization of the manuscripts are being done. Um, so we have a few questions from the viewers. Um, the first, um, I mean, you know, these two are kind of um, a clubbed. Um, are the manuscripts available? I mean, uh, those who are those ones are digitized. Are they accessible? Is English translation available? Um, the uh, can can they be accessed? And these mm -hmm. are the kind of uh, questions mm -hmm. from the audience. Yes. Uh, just to answer the first questions. Uh, the, we can order uh, images of, of the manuscripts, so they can write to us to order images. So, like uh, you know, now in the world there are two strategies. There are some libraries which are still private, and uh, you need to order images uh, from them, like the British Library or most of the British and English uh, libraries that hold uh, Syriac manuscripts. Other manuscripts are free online, like those of Paris, of uh, the Vatican, most of them, let me say, and those that are put on the platform of Himmel. So there are two strategies. Uh, we are still uh, following uh, now the privacy of keeping these manuscripts for the moment uh, uh, at the Patriarchate and providing only uh, images upon uh, request, upon orders. And concerning the translation, no, it's not that these manuscripts are not translated into English systematically, but they contain, uh, let's say, they contain uh, texts that sometimes are already translated, and this is mentioned in uh, the catalog. So when you will 
consult the catalog of manuscripts, you will find if this text is translated, this is what we are doing now, or uh, uh, it is yet unpublished or unedited and needs to be uh, edited and translated. Uh, Sayyidina, we got one more question uh, in connection with what you just mentioned. Does the library provide uh, seminars or podcasts or content uh, via email subscriptions? Um, not really, not really. We don't have now uh, seminars uh, uh, teaching uh, about manuscripts, etc. This is, is this is done now by other, uh, I know, libraries around the world that are preparing sessions or seminars uh, to present uh, how to study manuscripts or uh, how to make uh, critical editions of, of unpublished text. But uh, at the time, uh, with our uh, really um, uh, number of those who are working at the Department of Syriac Studies, we are not yet able to do this work. Thank you, Sayyidina. Just out of curiosity, uh, you mentioned that there are many uh, people bringing uh, the manuscripts, and they may not be the original, the legit ones. So hmm. how do you determine whether a manuscript is um, original or how do you determine on the legit of the yes. uh, manuscripts? Are there any scientific techniques like you know, radiocarbon dating? Mm. Uh, for most of those that are brought to us, uh, there are really naive uh, art uh, artifacts, uh, what we call them, uh, so false manuscripts, okay? The, the, most of them are naive. Sometimes they have printed uh, uh, imprinted uh, a text which is already printed. So they are taking uh, some pages from uh, a regular printed Bible and imprinting them on old pages. So when you look at the text, you will find out directly this is not a handwriting, but uh, really a printed text. Some or most of them are printing uh, images because they think that people will be interested more in images than in uh, texts so and the images that are uh, chosen that are, are really western modern images of jesus christ and the virgin mary and you will find out directly that these are printed images not really icons or miniatures or old uh, yeah uh, so for the kind of manuscripts that are brought to us most of them can be uh, easily recognized and uh, as false. Uh, but uh, yeah, in other cases, let's say like in the case of uh, the manuscript of Qumran that were found in uh, Palestine in the middle of the 20th century and uh, were brought to the Syriac uh, Bishop of Jerusalem at the time, Bishop Samuel uh, Yeshua, um, Yes, at that time, it was very difficult to know if these manuscripts are really old or uh, they are uh, relatively uh, recent and uh, studies on them were needed, but uh, it is very diff different from what we are receiving nowadays. Thank you, Sayyidina. We got another question. Um, the question is displayed. Uh, are there any plans to consolidate manuscripts from the monastic libraries into the patriarchal library? Uh, yes, what uh, you you are uh, you are seeing how the collection of the patriarchate is growing uh, gradually with uh, the last uh, twenty years. How it became like that? It uh, grew. It is because we are bringing from uh, different places manuscripts but not systematically bringing uh, the manuscripts from all the monasteries to gather them at the Patriarchate. We prefer that we keep them as long as they are digitized in uh, those places. So now, let me say most, if not all, the monasteries have already uh, digitized their manuscripts. If I'm speaking here about St. Mark in Jerusalem, uh, St. Matthew in uh, Iraq, we've uh, went there, the Department of Syriac Studies, we've went there and we've digitized 
all the manuscripts at St. Matthew Monastery, Mormatta, in Iraq, and we have copies uh, of them at the Patriarchate, and we kept a copy for uh, the monastery, a digital copy. And uh, in Turkey, the same. Uh, uh, we have uh, the monastery of Mor Gabriel, uh, Zafaran, so all of them have digitized their collections, and we uh, hold copies of uh, these manuscripts at the Patriarchate. Digital copies. Um, this is, uh, are there any collections that can be shared with children? Or maybe, uh, maybe I would add like, you know, some something like, you know, icons, and things like that. that can be shared. Uh, yes, uh, we have icons uh, at the, in different Bibles in, in the Patriarchate. You know, the icons, what we call the images or the miniatures, are found in the Syriac tradition, mostly in uh, Bibles. So in many of our Bibles, we've, uh, we have uh, images or of the life of Jesus Christ and sometimes of the saints. Uh, we've made them uh, available, most of them, on our website of Department of Syriac Studies. But those who would desire to acquire them, like in a set of uh, images, uh, they can be used in churches, uh, they can be exhibited in churches according to the liturgical year. We have images for every Sunday, almost, for the liturgical year. So we've prepared at the Patriarchate a set of 100 of these miniatures, printed on a really uh, big format, uh, for the image, and uh, this is sold, yes, at the Patriarchate. You can order them, you can contact me or contact the Syriac uh, uh, Studies Department through our website if you wish, and uh, you can get this set of 100 uh, images or icons for the liturgical year. This can be used, uh, let's say, in catechism in churches to teach the children about the history of Jesus, uh, about the Bible, the events, through uh, the images of our tradition. Um, Sayyidina, with your permission, I, I just want to show... Yes, uh, you have already ordered one copy. Yeah, yeah um, what it does not, look like. Yeah, <laughs> this is not a marketing, but, you know, um, I just want to show, like, you know, this is the collection looks like, one of the things that I got yes. here in the U.S. And this let is me the box. This is like a very heavy box. Uh, so this has a lot of collections. I mean, you know, if you just look at, you know, these are all mm -hmm. different icons, like, oh, mm -hmm. this is so heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's printed in such a wonderful uh, heavy-duty paper. It's very glossy, and you can see there are all the Syriac icons you can see. I believe this is more than 100 icons, right? No, no, we've counted them. We've uh, really uh, uh, wanted to have this 100 uh, icons. <laughs> 100 icons. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So one thing maybe the uh, churches and the Sunday schools can do, like, you know, uh, during, uh, based on maybe the lectionary or based on the feast days, they can just display uh, mm -hmm. these icons and, you know, share with children and, you know, talk about the icons. Um, and uh, this has uh, something like, you know, from where this is being obtained. Yes. Uh, so, and the dates, everything yes. is here. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Whether you'll yes. be able to yes. see we've this. put in Syriac, in Arabic, in English, uh, a right. yeah, description of what is this yeah. icon about, and then the origin and the date. Yes. All right. So these are some of the icons. Um, so thank you so much, Sayyidina, for this wonderful work. And uh, uh, so reach out to Sayyidina or the Syriac uh, Studies Department uh, to get a copy of this one. And we got one question from Dr. Winger. And here is the question. Are there any collections in the library that contain uh, palim sets or does this require further surviving of the manuscripts? Um, so far, I haven't seen uh, palim sets. So to explain to, this, uh, to those who are following us, palim sets are manuscripts that were uh, written, let's say, for the first time and then uh, a later scribe will come and erase the first hand writing because manuscripts were really very expensive to 
produce so they will reuse the same paper the same leather while erasing the first hand uh, writing and writing again on the same leather and nowadays we can with the technologies read both texts the old one which was erased and the recent one uh, so far i haven't uh, seen palimpsests in uh, our library but uh, we never know because we haven't yet studied all uh, the manuscripts in depth so we may have some surprises at some time but uh, this kind of uh, let's say uh, surprises should occur uh, mostly with the parchment manuscripts so those who which are written on leather and of these we don't have uh, a quant uh, a lot of them i said we had uh, only the 12th section in the first manuscripts gathered by patrick afrem barson and in those i we haven't noticed any uh, palimpsest so we have another question uh say now what are some ways uh the lay faithful in the west can help the library um well they can help if if uh, they have uh, seen or they can get manuscripts to add them to the collections so, so many times particulars have uh, let's say manuscripts and they hold them uh, in their houses thinking that they can sell them for uh, high prices we've noticed that many times this happened in germany let's say uh, people's people were holding in their houses manuscripts that they brought from uh, turkey and uh, with um, information and more uh, conscience uh, they started bringing them to the church to the bishop and uh, the bishop in germany morphiloxius matthias Neisch, now gathered like uh, 70 manuscripts uh, that he got from people from particulars who brought them from their houses to the monastery. So this kind of uh, action really helped the church all around the world. So to br bring them to monastery like in Germany or in Holland, where we have collections and we have already digitized them in Germany, or to the patriarchate, this will be a kind of help. Uh, other help can be with helping the patriarchate or the department in uh, investing more in uh, cataloging the manuscripts, let me say, or publishing texts contained in the manuscripts. So helping the patriarchate will help also in some kind uh, the library or uh, the department. Um, thank you, Saidna. Um, so we got a couple of questions here. One is, is there a project uh, to open a museum at the patriarchate about the Syriac Aramaic heritage? And uh, the second question is what happened or are the um, the the Combran mm. fragments, are they preserved, uh, which were in the possession of uh, late Metropolitan yes. or Athanasius? Yes. Uh, thank you, Georgis. Uh, actually, concerning the museum, I cannot speak about a project, rather about an idea. We thought about that. We had the idea of a museum for the patriarchate, uh, maybe in Marat Saidnaya, but the situation in Syria and the priority of humanitarian aid uh, came really first. So we, the patriarchate, if it has to spend money, let me say it frankly, uh, on projects, it will be on humanitarian projects right now, not on building a museum. I think uh, the priorities are different now, but the idea is here. You know, we are thinking about it. And concerning uh, the Qumran uh, project um, uh, or fragments preserved in New Jersey, they are still in New Jersey in the possession of the uh, Arch, uh, the diocese of uh, New Jersey, and uh, they are there. Uh, I think the text of these fragments are well known and by the scholars and uh, are already known and uh, digitized yes uh, thank you Saidna. Uh, are there any other collections which are being published by the um, department of syriac studies uh, other than the icons uh, 
right now published uh, we have published the memory of Jacob of Saruk. So uh, we've published two volumes containing memory of Jacob of Saruk uh, in 2017. So it was a lot of work, three or four, four years work, on which I worked personally with a, a seminarian uh, who was studying in Ma'arat Saidnaya, Aymad Siriani, and together with the help of other seminarians who worked a little on uh, some of the homilies, we've gathered like 160 homilies unpublished previously of St. Jacob of Sarug. And this event was celebrated really in the Syriac studies field by many scholars because for one time we've published a critical edition, let's say, uh, of these homilies and make them available. Um, the vast majority of these homilies uh, was in the manuscripts of the Patriarchate. So we, when studying these manuscripts, we've published the homilies contained uh, in them. And uh, there are still to do, there are still many to do. I know this question doesn't make sense, but just again, out of curiosity, like what percentage of digitization is being done with the um, the manuscripts that we have uh, in our possession, I mean, in the patriarchal library? Uh, the first section is part of the question. Sorry, I haven't heard well. What percentage of uh, percentage? digitization is, uh, yes. What what percentage do you, you mean? I, I mean, you know, um, like, you know, are we done with uh, 25? Uh, what percentage? Percentage, sorry, percentage. No, no, we have digitized everything. Everything is now digitized. We've finished uh, the digitization of process. Uh, process. Sorry, I haven't, uh, well. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, and uh, um, so this is something which, again, uh, one of the uh, viewers have asked, like, you know, how yeah. the uh, common people can be part of uh, the Department of Syriac Studies, like, you know, are there, um, like, you know, you know, we're taking out of this academic world to reaching out to the believers, are there anything, mm -hmm. uh, any kind of ideas or any kind of uh, projects? I know the humanitarian things comes mm -hmm. first, uh, yes. given the scenario, but... Uh Actually, what we are doing, uh, some of our projects is, let's say, providing uh, on our website um, many uh, resources for uh, our uh, faithful, our believers all around the world. So we are providing on this website um, electronic resources, making them available. We are digitizing uh, these uh, books and uh, making them available. Some people uh, helped us, uh, let's say, in providing, let's say, a scanner for the library where we work to digitize uh, these books, for example. So there are many kinds of uh, little things that people helped us with uh, that help us in uh, giving, um, let's say, uh, um, in progressing in our work. For example, we need uh, sometimes to go to another country to digitize some manuscripts. So we are sometimes helped by contributions from some people. Uh, some uh, are sending, um, let's say, some also uh, help for uh, buying new books for the printed, uh, so this printed section of the library to be up to date in our printed books also in the seminary. So this is a major part of our work also at the department to buy printed books for the library at the Patriarchate, not for the manuscripts, but uh, really the library. So when we have uh, uh, some help, we are buying printed books for uh, the library. So sending printing books, printed books, uh, collections for the library also helps uh, the seminarians, uh, seminary at uh, the Patriarchate and the Department of Syriac Studies. Thank you so much, uh, Shaidna. Uh, this is such a wonderful introduction to the Patriarchal Library, and I am positive that there will be more questions and people will be reaching out to bothering you, um, oh, you know, despite ready. your busy schedule and dedication. 
uh, with uh, this work. Uh, this is such a wonderful initiative, um, and uh, the right person is um, in, in heading the department. Uh, so we, have, we will take in one more question and then we'll conclude. Um, so many works are being done and transcribed and typed directly to the DSS website to read, making it more accessible. Can those who know Syriac help oh, doing this? Yes, for example, for, this, for example, this kind of work also will help us in providing us with transcribed uh, texts. So anybody who is transcribing Syriac texts who can uh, write really and transcribe Syriac texts will help us and we will put these texts online uh, as we have done with many texts of more philoxenos uh, on, of the bible uh, more Ephraim, jacob of seruk so uh, whoever is writing a book or transcribing a printed book and writing it into a word can send it, can send it to us and we will uh, make it available on our page um, thank you um, so before we conclude, we have uh, two more um, sessions coming up uh, this month. Um, the next one is on 19th of, um, February, um, the same time at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Oh, the, there is a lecture on Syriac liturgical manuscript by Dr. Ephraim Aishak. And uh, the second one, I mean, the, the third one in this month is on February 26th, Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, the highlights from the collect from a collection of Syriac fragments found at the Oriental Institute, Chicago University, by Father Doctor Eskander Bakari. Uh, Bakari, so, yes, Shari. Father Eskander or Sharvil Bakari, yes. Uh, Greetings so, to both of them. <laughs> yeah, looking forward. Stay tuned yes. uh, for these two lectures as well uh, just, uh, requesting all audience to support or viewers to support um, the uh, the department of syriac studies as well as the small initiatives uh, uh, by orho the way and its team uh, so there are a few people which i need to mention for organizing these uh, lecture series uh, dr joe binchako uh, mr binto paul so they are the pillars behind Uroho the Way and its initiative. And thank you so much. Thank you, Saidna, for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, you. presentation you, and all the great works that you are doing in the vineyard of our Lord and our God. Thank you, Father. Saudi, uh, thank, thank you again. Uh, thank you, all viewers. Uh, all glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We'll see you again.